I am Jim Collison and live from our virtual studios around the world. This is Gallup's Call to Coach, recorded on June 26th, 2020. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you're listening live on our live page, right above me is a link to the YouTube channel that'll have the chat room. Love to have you log in. Many of you are already doing that, so I appreciate you doing it. If you have questions after the fact, you might be listening as a podcast or on the recorded version on YouTube. You can always send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. Don't forget, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, follow us there, a great way to do that. And if on, you can follow us and um, subscribe on any podcast app, it's getting real popular, all the cool kids are doing it. Just search Gallup Webcast on any app and, uh, and you can then listen every week. Jillian Anderson is our host today. She's a subject matter expert for Gallup. And Jillian, that sounds super important. Welcome to Call <laughs> the Coach. <laughs> you know, we were joking before this. Uh, you, you get called subject matter expert. People ask you what you're a subject matter expert in. So today we get to be subject matter experts around around building a strengths based culture. And Jim, we're so excited to get to be hosting Southwest Airlines here today. The Love Airline, get to spotlight them and share their story. Um, happy Friday to everybody who's joining us. We've got a fantastic group crew who's live today, and uh, we're also excited to get to host this as a as a webcast recording for groups that want to be able to come back and think about how do you build a strengths-based culture within your own, own organization and um, how do you bring that to life if this is something you're passionate about and see the power in. I am thrilled to get to host Dana Williams today. Dana, finally, we were, finally. Originally, <laughs> we were originally supposed to do this webcast on March 13th and Dana, you yes. and I were together March 11th, I believe it was, at uh, uh, Southwest headquarters in Dallas, Texas. You know, yeah. and folks, so if you're listening in, you know, you can think back to that time frame. Obviously, that week in particular was the very early onset of how COVID-19 was hitting our country, and particularly the, the airline industry, feeling that very yeah. deeply at this point. And, you know, being a few months out from that initial onset, um, Dana, we're looking forward to kind of hearing from you about how Southwest has been leaning into your strengths during this yeah. time. And, you know, I think about all of the work that you did even leading into that season to build a strengths-based culture. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is what you've been leaning into for creating resiliency during this season. So folks, just for some background here before we yeah. before we uh, spotlight Dana, within Southwest, just incredible work on building a strengths-based culture. You've got every single executive leader who has actually um, been coached around their own strengths. You've yes. got um, 60 strengths coaches across the organization and growing across departments. And you've got over 90% of leaders who have opted in to saying we want to provide strengths-based leader and manager development across Southwest. So pretty incredible when you think about all the work that's been done um, to set you up for building a strengths-based organization. And Dana has been a part of this work since the very beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Dana, I think you started working with strengths about eight years ago and as, as a member of the marketing department, a leader in the marketing department, uh, became certified five years ago. And the rest is history from there. Yeah. <laughs> um, before is. we get into Southwest story, I just want to start personal for a minute here. Can you just share your own top five strengths with the group that's on here? Absolutely. And thanks again, Jillian, for having us. And um, I sit here representing a team of people. I mean, I'm just the spokesperson for so many people that have helped um, start this journey. But um, my top five are ideation, strategic, futuristic, maximizer, and individualization. So um, they come to play a lot, and especially right now. So I know we're going to tap into that a little bit later too, because I want to hear about yeah. what you're dreaming about with that ideation. We've, oh, we've got yeah. to, that's a fun one to lean into. And and Dina, remind um, remind me how you first initially got introduced to strengths because this was actually outside of Southwest, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of my colleagues and at, at the time my best friend at work, Ann Murray, brought strengths to our marketing department from her church. Her church had been doing it, and they're still continuing to do it. And um, we used it as a as a tool in our um, leadership meetings. And then we started kind of just, you know, reading the book and developing some training for our marketing leaders around it. Didn't really have any um, 
any knowledge about how to grow um, a coaching business or anything about coaches uh, until Kelly Bacon kind of introduced us along with our SWA. Uh, we have a university called Southwest Airlines University and Angie Sanders was with us the whole entire way as we were deciding what tool we wanted to use. Even though the company wasn't ready for it, we just created our own grassroots effort and um, a couple of other departments started um, doing that as well. And then we kind of all started connecting together and sharing what we were learning. And then before long, our leaders um, approved for us to become coaches. And then that just started the movement. But uh, Kelly and her team at Gallup were just so patient um, with all of us as we waited um, for that opportunity to come. And we were ready when the opportunity came. And I think that was a huge key in all of this. So let's yeah. let's go back to some of those early days, Dana. Oh, yeah. I think you know it's it's fun because you have been a part of this since the very beginning. Um, you, Kelly Bacon, Brian Brim from our team, I know we're a yeah. part of there. Uh, for me, it's been fun to join in in the last several years yeah. here. And uh, but take us back to those to those early days. And for folks who are listening in and just thinking about, you mentioned grassroots, right? Uh, if we yeah. were to just kind of pull back the curtain and get an idea of what this looked like as it was taking off, give us a little peek of behind the curtain. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I think what Ann and I were both passionate about it and our leaders were passionate about it. And I think that helped a lot. And then they were able to help endorse it with other leaders um, while the university wasn't ready to take on that for the whole enterprise, they agreed to stay with us as we walked through that opportunity and started um, developing our own training. So we we kind of used the material from the book. We brought in different um, speakers. Um, we Every time we had a training, we would kind of bring in different things about the strengths. In those early days, I think it was 2012, I think we've had like six reorgs since then, but during 20, 2013, 2014, we had a reorg and it, all of our leaders in marketing, we really looked at everybody's strengths and how everybody, what looked good. For example, my story is I didn't know I had strategic until I did my strengths and I was um, at that time moved into an opportunity where I could build um, strategic uh, planning and worked on the brand as we rebranded um, in, in 2014 um, to the heart that you see now um, and, and pulling my, using that strategic. But I learned from, from just studying and everything that I could learn grassroots that I had to work on that. I couldn't just go and be strategic and I had to really practice it daily. And I think that good analogy was using like a gym. You got to go work out every day or those muscles aren't going to work. And the other thing I learned is that I could not develop my strengths by myself. I had to work in conjunction. So Anne became a great partner in that. Now I have other partners I'm working with across the enterprise and within, within marketing. But it's kind of fun as we progress to look back and think through of how it happened. Because at the time, it was just happening. We just yeah. were. I think because I have ideation, futuristic, and strategic, I was constantly always thinking about what can we do next and what are opportunities um, what's the challenge? What's the solution? How do we use strengths as a tool for that? Yeah, I love that. You know, in your comment, just even on the the power of community and hearing some of your partners that came alongside you with this, um, you know, Don Clifton talked about that early on, that our strengths grow in the context of community. Yeah. So having other people who are, you know, see the world a little different really from you can be really powerful as you're thinking about working together. And I know you guys did with marketing, revenue management, you know, you had some yes. great leadership that kind of took off and said, our departments are going to be committed to, to doing this early on. Give us an idea of, um, I think of the the Hamilton song that says it's not a moment, it's the movement, right? Yeah. And give us an idea of how did you how did you move from those early grassroots stages to this being a movement to cross Southwest? Yeah, I think I'm going to give you guys probably three things to think about today as you're building your movement, and one of those is to build your tribe. And we, when revenue management, which is part of our commercial team, when they started joining the strengths movement and became coaches about the same time that Ann and I did, we started kind of working closely with them, just ad hoc, just grassroots. What are y'all doing? Hey, what are you doing? Um, 
Ann and I were both in a lot of cross-functional integrated teams. One of the teams um, we were in called, was called Team of Teams. And I asked the leader if we could bring that strengths into that group because I knew that was an influential group. And I knew that was a group of leaders across the enterprise. So my futuristic was someday, someday, these will be the ones that will be our advocates. And uh, so we did strengths with them. And right after that, we got calls from these various departments saying, can you come and do strengths with our team? And so we did um, after we became coaches. Um, that was a powerful movement. And then it just kind of went from there. But by the time our CEO said, I want to do strengths, I believe in strengths, um, we already had this little tribe kind of formed of about six to eight people. At the same time in marketing, we were adding more coaches. So that was a benefit. Um, and that freed me up to go and help across the enterprise and let the people within marketing focus on marketing. And of course, I had an amazing, I have an amazing leader that believed in strengths and let me do that. It wasn't even my day job. My day job was marketing. Um, but I just integrated it every time we put a team together. I'd do the team mm -hmm. grid and say, because I did so much cross-functional work, um, a lot of integrated marketing, um, whether it's, you know, setting up Max or Hawaii or whatever, I always did a team grid um, as we pulled those groups together. But that was the start of it. And that yeah. helps give you kind of that background. Well, uh, and I think it's really fun. I mean, Dana, I actually remember sitting next to you on a plane when you guys were planning your, um, when you were first, I think, uh, getting ready to launch your flights to Hawaii. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I love how you, you know, first of all, just bringing your marketing thinking to all of this and, and authentic branding, right? And yes. yeah, it, there's been numerous times where I've seen you pull team grids together and think about, okay, how are we positioning people to play to their strengths and accomplish this objective? You guys have done a pretty masterful job of using this as a, a very effective um, tool toward uh, actually driving your business. You know, and, and you can you share a little bit about kind of going from the mo from the moment that early grassroots effort to the movement. How do you create sustainability around all of this and how do you help really with that integration piece? Well, I think coming alongside you guys was great because between um, our leadership, um, Angie at the SWAU and between Kelly at Gallup and, and your team, um, we were able to build together a roadmap and a plan, but really um, the second point that I have here is really get those leaders engaged early on because they're going to be your advocates. And if they're not engaged, it just takes longer. And once we knew that Gary Kelly, our CEO and their exec executive team and his managing director was all about it and she became a coach, that's when the movement started and they started planning um, executive coaching through um, your team with our leaders. And then we started doing uh, training within the uh, senior management committee once a quarter and just bring a little bit of strengths in. And that helped a ton because then that's when the movement started. And um, of course, Angie and her team weren't set up to manage building the coaches network. None of us were, but we as a coaches tribe, <laughs> helped. And what we did was we worked with Angie. We all had different day jobs across the enterprise, but we worked with Angie Sanders and our SWAU folks to help build a coaches network. And we started there. Instead of starting with champions and all that, we wanted to start with make sure all the leaders were engaged and had the coaching. Then let's get all of the coaches build the coaches network. And the way we did that was we actually, when a leader said, I want to do this and this is my going to be my coach and they got them signed up for coaching. Angie's Angie would meet with them. And then I would assign them one of our form, one of our coaches that was a seasoned coach to help mentor them through the process. And so some of us had five or six departments we were working with, but that helped the movement go. If we didn't have that, we didn't wait for Angie to get a department in place because we knew, you know, that wasn't going to happen quickly. Um, but we we did that. And now she does have an amazing uh, person in place that's kind of managing all of that. And um, one of the other cool things we did was working with you and uh, Brian and having a monthly coaches call where we could talk about our wins, our struggles, what we were going through as coaches, um, things we needed. And we would work with you guys um, to kind of figure out what that was. 
Um, and I'll talk through COVID and how we've we've dealt with that. But but that's what it was up until March. Um, yeah. Monthly calls and lots of connection points with that tribe. So we have the tribe connecting. We have the leaders. And then what we did in marketing and now some of the other departments are starting to do, we built our own advocate network. Now, mm. advocates are not coaches. They're just people that love strengths. They just get excited when they hear strengths. And that's where you want to spend your energy because there's always going to be somebody saying, hey, I did that. I'm not interested. You know, I don't have mm -hmm. time. Don't worry about that. You know, it's kind of like Mr. Rogers, go find the helpers, go find the pe people that are passionate with this and go work with them. And that's where I spent my energy. And that's where the team spent their energy. And that, I love that. And the reason why, think about this, we are in this situation now where nobody knows who's what's going to happen, right? People are moving around, whether they're moving for personal reasons or other reasons, maybe because they're getting furloughed or whatever. Um, you've got to have a network that keeps growing and it can't just be one person. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the tribe that you're building and that tribe will keep, we still had several coaches, um, even last year that became a coach in one department and they moved into another department and they still were able to help and grow that, that coaching within that department. So that was the exciting thing for me to watch all that happen. Yeah. So. And you know, I think there's a, there's a common theme even in what you're sharing, Dana, right. Of, of um, going where, where the energy is to some degree. Yes. So even going back to, you know, very initially when you had marketing and revenue management, a couple groups who the leaders were on board and said, Hey, let's, let's, you know, really invest in this as departments almost became early departments to say, um, we're going to show the power of a strengths-based approach to so kind of go go to where that energy is. Then building this this tribe, like you said, you know, you've yep. got kind of this network of coaches internally. I love what you're sharing within marketing because building these fueling kind of these advocates mm -hmm. and folks who are already, you know, they're the ones who are listening to this podcast on their own <laughs> and right. coming up with ideas right. to bring into their team. So um, following kind of where that energy is, and then you've been able to build that into a pretty robust roadmap that really is um, allowing kind of department by department. I do want to just lean into one question based on what you shared here, because I think it's a common one that we get across, um, in particular, the strengths coaching community. Uh, but, but within organizations, if we're looking for leadership buy-in around this, mm -hmm. right, what's just some ideas around like what's worked for you guys on, um, you know, you, you've got leaders who are invested in this. What's gotten right. you to that place? Yeah. In fact, I got a call from one of our senior um, leaders um, at, in December and said, like at the end of December and said, can you come January 8th and do a strengths with our leadership? And this group was all senior leaders. Some of them had not bought in yet to strengths. Some of them had um, because they have just they've been so busy with operational issues. They hadn't had time to do that. So I knew that going in. And so I have individualization. So I kind of customize that morning of training time with them based on that, based on what their needs are, knowing that. And I had them build a um, plan based on their goals for the year and apply their strengths and work in teams around that so that they were seeing that, you know, this is not a one and done. This is my third point. You've got to integrate strengths constantly. It's like we in, in marketing, we don't have uh, an activity with our leaders or with our team without doing some kind of strengths or talking about strengths when we have the group together. Um, even last Friday, I did that with our leadership team when we talked about change through strengths. And so it's it's a constant. It's a tool. It's a language. And I feel like characters revealed in the fog of war and I feel like strengths are revealed in the fog of war and what we're dealing with right now let's, and how to use that. Yeah, let's go there, Dana. Okay. I mean, I think we're, yeah. you're bringing some some really powerful stories of what you guys have done. And, you know, maybe one other just element to add in for, for folks who are particularly thinking about that roadmap. I know you guys have had kind of department by department sign up and it's it's a three year journey of leader and manager Absolutely. development around strength. So it's not a like we're just introducing this once. This is a right. cultural movement movement that's baked into now how you're thinking and operating. You've been investing in this. Um, you still got a further journey, you know, in terms of how you're integrating all of this with uh, across the organization playing to this. But when you think about the reality of what we're experiencing right now, you know, Absolutely. the last several months, COVID-19 hitting, this has been huge for the airline industry. Right. Um, give us some insight into how do you how do you lean into strengths in a season like this? You know, what's what's life like for you right now? 
Absolutely. Um, I think when I saw you March 11th and yep. you were set up to train our coaches then and we kind of had, I was like, this something's happening here big and we've got to be ready. And so you kind of pivoted what we were talking about and we went right into the, the four things that a leader needs during during a crisis um, from their that from their followers. And it was hope, compassion, stability and trust. And so immediately um, that we had been working in a small um, leadership group around COVID for about two weeks at that point. And that next week was when everything kind of hit. And I just put those four words up on the board as a team. This is what we need to focus on. And then we put them in a strengths grid. And I looked at the grid and I said, before we start, look how many people have futuristic here. Let's lean into that right now and think about where we want to be. We don't know what's going to happen, but what does that look like? And how, because I knew that would energize them to be planning out what the next week would like, next two weeks, next three weeks. Um, and I feel like that same analogy we use with our marketing that we do with our internal marketing. And I just, because I've been a marketer at Southwest for so long, I always believe that you always market internally first and mm -hmm. then externally. So we've been working side by side with our communication team. And um, I was excited to, I work really closely with them. So I've been mentoring that team for a year and they have four coaches now. And it was incredible to watch how they managed all of this. Um, our leaders um, have been incredible. Um, tons of communication. Um, if you look at anything Gary Kelly or, or even my, my leaders have done, it shows the trust, the compassion, the hope, and the stability. It's like the realism versus the optimism here. You know, we're going to get through this. There's the optimism, the realism. We don't know what that looks like. There could be furloughs. There could be, and they've been very honest. So there's that trust that's built and that mm -hmm. stability. So we've been working with our leaders and I have some great um, collaborator collaborators in marketing that I work with on a daily basis and Alyssa is one of them. And we just kind of start thinking through, she's got activator and I've got the ideation and we kind of start thinking through what do they need right now? And um, working alongside our, our strengths coaches, Michelle and, and Chelsea and, um, Alyssa, we have really sat down and we meet every month as just a small team and talk about what do our team needs. And we came up with resiliency and did that um, mm -hmm. last month. And right now we're working on what does strengths at home look like? Mm -hmm. You know, you're parenting, you're, um, you're trying to do your work. Oh, and then also there's marriage situation. And <laughs> <laughs> so a partnership situation, you know, whatever your roommate situation, this is the new normal. So how do we take in working with Austin at Gallup? How do we take our strengths? It's the same thing that we're learning from him that happened at work. You apply at home. So again, my third point is integrate strengths daily. Don't feel like it's a one and done. And I think that's the myth that so many um, companies I see when I talk to them about strengths, they're like, oh, we've done that. And I'm like, no, no, no. Tell mm -hmm. me what you've done. Um, yeah. And it becomes a, it becomes a great tool, a great framework, a great uh, language for everybody, especially now. And then for yeah. our people to feel like they care about me and they want to teach me about what this is like going to be. So we have a team of coaches in marketing and then outside of marketing working on what could this look like? Yeah. At home. I know, I so that's that. kind of where we're going right now. Well, it's fun. It's fun. I can already hear your kind of ideation and futuristic, <laughs> you know, thinking like, where can we take this next and yeah. how, do we, how do we integrate this? And, and that integration piece, you're really your third bullet there, um, I think is such an important one. Like we talk about, it's oh not gosh. just the start of things. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, just going back to that March 11th day, um, Goodness, I remember flying in that morning and we had a plan for the afternoon of what we were going to do with yeah. the coaches. <laughs> we got there <laughs> and you showed up, right, yeah. to, to let me in the lobby. And and you were like, hey, I mean, the, the feeling at headquarters was palpable that day. Yeah. Um, and Gary Kelly, your CEO, I think you showed me the the video he sent out to all employees. Um, folks who are listening in, I mean, if you just Google any, any videos that Gary's done, uh, just 
incredible when you see it. I'm like, one of the phrases that stood out was in that video, you know, just recognizing, like you said, balancing realism and optimism and, and saying, my job as a leader is to tell you when things are really good and to let you know when things are tough. And you think about how that builds trust for employees, you know, hearing something Absolutely. like that. And you guys have been doing so much communication, you know, through this season. Um, and 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 that afternoon we did pivot. We went into the room and said, "This is not the time for us to go with Plan A. This mm -hmm. is the time for us to go with. Let's think about how we lead well in this season." And anybody uh, uh, who's not familiar with the needs of followers research that you referenced, that's really our Gallup research around what is it that followers need from their leaders. And those mm -hmm. four elements. I know you guys have been using those to think about how you even do company wide and customer communications. Absolutely. Um, let's go there for just a minute because I think with your marketing background, mm -hmm. you, you're you trained to think about you know, that employee and customer connection. So right. all of this work that you're doing internally, you said you're doing a lot of mentoring with your internal marketing teams. What do you see as the ripple effect for the customer in all of this? Yeah, I think so. I've grown up at Southwest. I've been off and yeah. on with the brand for almost a long time. <laughs> a long yeah. time. And, um, <laughs> What I've learned and been trained are, you know, is that when you take care of employees, the customers do well. And we're in the people business. We just happen to have aircraft. Um, it doesn't matter that we can't fly everybody that wants to fly right now or they're not ready. But when they're ready, we're going to be there for them. We actually have a fair sale going on today, which is great. Um, but when we look at when we look at marketing and we look at the stages, we do research too, like you do at Gallup, we do research about what our customers are feeling. And one of the things that really popped is they wanted to feel safe. And what would make them feel safe was when people wear their masks. So that was one of the things that our customer experience team um, worked on is what are all the things that our operations team did an incredible job. So it's not one department now working on marketing marketing is all of these pulling this data and research and then pulling what can we do operationally and what do the customers want and really focusing I mean that was important for me today to hear who are the customers that you guys have on on this podcast I want to know what they want to hear I want to make sure they feel heard um, and that's what customers want and so all of the communication we've been doing coming out with the Southwest Promise now coming out with the Fair oh Sale goodness. for Fall so it's August through December that you can book your travel. And I think today's the last day of the sale. So if you're watching this, today's the, the, the 26th <laughs> of June. But it's we've always been known as, um, you know, the person, the company, the brand that cares about humans and people. And I've just been raised that way. And I think you'll see a shift right now in um, empathy of mm -hmm. other businesses. Um, and I think that the tool to help with understanding our employees with strengths is the same tool that helps our customers feel like they care about me. Mm. I'm important to them. So we're not mm. talking about us all the time. We're, we're crafting our communication around what they need. And Dana, I think I shared this to you when we connected quick the other day, but that, that Southwest Promise video, the first one that came out. Oh my I gosh. teared up when I oh. saw it, but it yeah. was, um, you know, and I think from that, from the outside coming in initially working with you, I was like, oh, this is a, you know, fun brand. It's a, what's the brand experience actually going to be like? And yeah. I think you stated it really well. I've seen how your values have guided your decision-making during this time. Absolutely. And, and that phrase, I don't want to miss what you said there. I, I, that phrase that you said of, we are a people business who happen right. to have the, aircraft. Yeah, <laughs> the customer service business. Yeah. We just happen, I mean, we could go sell any, you know, that's what we do and everything. And we work so hard to get the customers, but our employees, we know that I know if the marketing department's worked really hard and the operations and everybody's worked hard to get that customer, we want to keep them and we want them to be, tr we want them to know that we care about them and that they can trust us. Yeah. And so it's the same thing in building an internal program as we're doing externally. I always start internally first and then we go external and build it. I love that. And we have yeah. so much of our Gallup research shows the power. Uh, we actually have a book called Human Sigma. That's the power of employee engagement and customer engagement. And we see the absolute biggest lever that you can pull to impact customer engagement is employee engagement. So Absolutely. the work that you guys have been doing, I think your story highlights that so nicely, what that ripple effect starts to look like.
like. Um, Dana, I want to play to your ideation of futuristic. You sure. alluded to a couple of these things. Uh, you know, we're kind of going past, present, future here, right? Like yeah. that grassroots story, you've got yeah. this beautiful roadmap in place, how you're dealing with COVID-19. Um, what are you dreaming about? So you, you yeah. mentioned a few things. G give us sure. a little picture. Well, one of the things that Ann used to tease me about, as I said, I knew we would had have made it in strengths when I see someone from Gallup speaking to all the leaders. And that happened uh -huh. yeah, like when Brian spoke to them. Yeah. I was like sending Angie a text. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sending <laughs> Ann and Brian. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is happening. So I think my futuristic plays out. So now here we are. We have um, Tiffany, who manages our, our coaches now through SWAYU. And then we have all of our amazing leaders at SWAYU that um, are our facilitators and they've been um, amazing um, to, to train in strength. So we're trying to figure out how do we gro continue growing this as we're kind of in this pause time. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we started doing was meeting weekly instead of monthly because there's a lot of needs and that connection point is so important with your tribe. So even if it's for 30 minutes, that's what we're doing right now um, to kind of plan and prep what we need. And so that's been beneficial just to share. Here's what's going on in my team. Here's what I need. We can cross pollinate other coaches. We can, you know, just work together as a team. But I think in the future, I think um, as everything's starting to come back, I think that we'll see a lot of um, coaches continuing to mentor. Um, besides our department and two other departments, um, they're starting to build some advocate teams. And the advocate teams are a reminder, those are the people who don't, they're not certified coaches, but they have a passion for strength. So in marketing, we had the leaders pick somebody in each team. And that way that leader has that person kind of helping bring a strengths activity into each, each moment when the team is together, that makes sense. So my vision is that as we grow these different departments, that they'll build the advocate team as well, because as people mm -hmm. move around, you don't want to lose that momentum, right? Yeah. And keep and keep that going. Um, I also think, like I say, characters revealed in the fog of war. So strengths are revealed. You get to really point people quickly and work quickly when you've got strengths as your bedrock, as your platform. And I think that's been uh, really crucial for us now. As we go through in transition, the company, we have a um, the extended time off program. We have a, a separation package going on. And so people are going to be moving around. So mm -hmm. the thing I'm hearing from leaders, I'm when I ask them, what do you need? What's going on? I think the help through transition. So I think really bringing up strengths and change is, is just, we got it. We had that discussion this week with our coaches in marketing. We got to keep that first primary out there um, because everybody's changing. And and then what does strengths and well-being look like? And, and how can we, because well-being is huge right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to take what's going on in the culture and bring it into your people, I think is huge. And then applying strengths, the integration of strengths on it. Yeah, I think we've really heard those integration stories. Um, Dana, I, I want to, you asked about audience groups earlier. Um, yeah. I, I want to, in a couple minutes here, I'll invite Jim to come back in if we've got some great questions from our group. Absolutely. But let's call out just a couple audience groups. And um, if you were to give advice for, let's say, new coaches who are listening Absolutely. in and, and they, they want to do this movement that you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> you know, where where did, where did they start? What, what advice do you give to, to that audience group? Great idea. So if they don't, if they're not in a, a company, if they're an individual coach, but maybe they're working with a company, I would say find the partner, find a collaborator there that they can work with to help build that. Um, and then start building a small group of like minded people that are passionate about strengths. If they're within a company and they want to grow up, but they know they can't grow it that fast. I want to tell them to take a pause and take a breath and don't worry. Just continue uh, working on themselves. I have a, a theory that I've learned from a counselor way back. And he just said, you know, manage inside your hula hoop. You can't change people outside the hula hoop. You've got to. And so really focus on yourself. And that's one of the pieces of advice I give to a lot of people as they're starting out. Just work on yourself. Listen to Call to Coach every week read the articles, stay smart, become an expert. 
get those people around you. I can think of some of the people in my certified class who are independent and I think about what they might need and I would say get people in your class or get people in your church and just start and I have done it with my church and some of the groups within my church are excited about it. Others haven't quite gotten there yet and I spend my time with the people that are passionate about it because they're going to be the people that go out and talk about it. Does yeah, that make sense? We hear that theme come out with it again. Yeah. Too. Absolutely. Uh, Let's move to the leader population. So let's say you're a leader in an organization and, you know, I mean, I bring in goodness, some of our Gallup research with this, we get to look at a lot of um, the power of strengths-based organizations, you know, and you look at organizations that really play to this. It's a business strategy because you're unlocking performance that we see organizations that play to their strengths, 18% increase in performance, 19% increase in sales, 73% lower attrition, 23% higher employee engagement. When you're truly thinking about how to play to the strengths of your people. So if you've got a leader inside of an organization that's going, how do I create a culture of yeah. strengths? What advice yeah. do you give? <laughs> yeah, I was on the phone call yesterday with a, a leader um, and, and that was his question. And leaders have so much on their plate right now, trying to build the business, create demand, all the things, manage the people they need a tool that is going to give them a quick insight into their people. And um, one of the things that this leader said yesterday is that has helped him so much mm -hmm. um, understand at working and leading his people from a distance, how to understand each of their strengths and how he can help um, craft his communication based on where they are. That would take mountains and months and years to do if you didn't mm -hmm. have a tool that was so well established and so uh, researched. Um, that's why I'm like, why would you even go anywhere else? This is this is the tool, and um, and it, it helps speed up the process of change and get quickly to where people are, especially in coaching right now at a distance. Yeah, and leading fantastic. at a distance. Thanks, Dana. Jim, sure. What are we hearing from some of our friends who've joined us today? Yeah, we're getting some good questions uh, good. from the chat room. Mark, Mark asked a good one, and I think this is, uh, I, I want to, Dana, I want you to spend a little time on it. Like the, the overall culture at Southwest, how much did that play into the success? In other words, strengths and the culture were almost, I mean, they were perfect for each other in a lot of ways. Do you guys sense that? Or yeah. talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to understand the question. Overall, great culture Southwest is known for. Allow for this innovative strengths culture to be more easily floored. So absolutely. Um, I think we we have a, one of our former um, VPs that is really big on talking about culture right now and how important that is. Um, our culture committee was started in the 90s and it has been flourishing ever since. And we have people from all across the company that get selected to be in the culture committee for the enterprise. But then we have within each department, marketing always has two culture leads. And then we have people that do things within that department. So it is a way of life at Southwest Airlines. As far as how strengths played into that, I think that that culture is, um, if you did um, probably a strengths grid from most of our leadership that we know of their strengths or people, they, this is a learning culture and we are a culture that are achievers. We want to achieve things. And so what is the quickest way I can achieve something is with strengths. And so I think having that culture was great, but we did not, um, having, that, having that opportunity worked um, does that help answer your question? I think, I, I think so. One of the, at the very end there, and I think this is a very valid question. Where do you get pushback inside the organization? Is yeah. there, do you have those issues? Absolutely. Yeah. That's every time, you know, there's always going to be a naysayer, always, even in a great culture as Southwest. I don't have time for this. I've done it. I'm, this is not me. And I'm like, you, that's just not the right. I'm not going to spend my time there. I will, I will say, I totally understand when you're ready. We're here. And let everybody around that person get ingrained and ingratiated. And then all of a sudden, I've seen a total flip where someone who didn't want to do it now is like the band, you know, band leader for strengths. So it just takes time. And don't worry if people aren't engaged in it. Um, spend your time with the ones that are. I think that's that's really good advice. Don't do it, you know, eighty you it's, can spend eighty percent of your time trying yeah. to influence the two percent, right? Yeah. Where, where that could be used. 
yeah. uh, well in other places. There had been another question. I'm gonna. There was a couple around this, but how are you guys measuring the the effectiveness of strengths inside the organization? Yeah, we are working on that right now um, because we we were just getting ready to do that when COVID hit. Um, to start. So we do have some um, measurement tools that we're doing for engagement. And so our engagement committee, along with our um, SWAU committee and the coaches are working on kind of tools that can help measure that. Um, I can tell you from marketing, we have seen an increase in engagement over the last five years um, with just the fact that people are, they feel like their work is meaningful. They feel like they're valued. Um, they feel like somebody at work cares for them. And, and so we've seen those kind of things pop. And it's because the very first week they come into marketing, we give them their strengths. And then we put them in a strengths 101 class. And then they get assigned a buddy. And it just, you know, it doesn't stop from there. Even in our um, in this environment right now, we're making sure all those people that came in this year are feeling connected and, and um, part of the movement. Does Jillian, that make you want, yeah, Jillian, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, no, it's it's a great question. I mean, you know, and and folks, you heard me share some of the the stats that we've seen from our own meta analysis within Gallup of strengths based cultures. And so you start to look at, and I know that's one of the things that we're really working on. Dana, and Kelly, and Brian, the rest of our our team are thinking about how do you actually quantify the impact within an organization. Um, if any of you have read our our um, Harvard Business Review article on the additive effect of different sciences, you'll see exactly what Dana's talking about. That there's almost this ripple effect that if you have have a culture that plays to their strengths, we know that automatically connects to driving an engaging culture. If you have an engaging culture, uh, we know that automatically connects to um, higher business performance. And so, you know, you kind of see this ripple effect of everything. And if we can start to kind of quantify some of those things, I think right now what we do have uh, probably two things in place. Um, first of all, qualitatively, even what you're sharing, Dana, right, which is some of the stories of those early right. groups that have gone through this and are saying, wow, we've actually seen changes in in our in our departments um, and then two i think from the quantitative perspective the two places you have quantitative are your engagement survey right now mm -hmm. uh, and then also your um as we roll out so I, I alluded to this earlier you know you've baked in opportunities for focusing right. on strengths you referenced that you know orientation you've got an, an right. introductory opportunity you've got a whole group of facilitators that does strengths discovery classes right, right? and then you've got department by department We've been rolling out um, strengths-based uh, curriculum for leaders and managers. And if you look at that journey, at every point in that journey, we actually do an impact evaluation. Um, so if someone goes to a course on leading with my strengths, and then the next one is, you know, leading my team's strengths, and then um, coaching uh, to performance on my team, we're getting we're getting quantitative measures after each of that in terms of the effectiveness of those um, that we can start to go back to in terms of our people uh, learning this. Uh, and applying it, and is it making a difference in how they're actually leading? Action. Dana, some questions Justin asked uh, about um, maybe it reaching mm -hmm. how where where strengths is reached. So there's been a yeah. question about the cabin crew, and then um, additionally, I think Dan had asked about hourly or like call center workers. Are, are is is it? Has it made its way down into some of those areas? So um, interestingly enough, yes. Um, we haven't been able to get it all the way down to um, flight crew, pilots, um, baggage handlers, um, people at the stations. We do have some of our, um, what we call CSNS, some of the people that are on the phone with our um, customers. They have been, um, they have a strengths movement going on within their department. Um, so, but, but yeah, I mean that, if you talk about Nirvana, that would be, you know, five years from now that we get to see all these um, employees, every employee that comes on board knows their strengths and they know that they're valued. Um, they feel that way already being at Southwest, but just to say it's, I love that analogy. Somebody gave me one time that it's like putting an x-ray up to see people quickly and say, oh, this is how this person's wired. Um, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is such a quick way for us to connect and communicate. And as we get into this agile environment of marketing and all the other things that are happening in our ch with changes in our world, we've got to figure out a way to quickly um, quickly connect. And and that's one of our purpose statements is that we want to connect with people um, and make sure that they are doing the things that they want to do and they're energized, whether they're a customer or an employee. Have you found as 
Uh, Jillian, one second. Well, you... I was just going to add Go in there with the, um, I think the question around just the different populations. I know some of this, you know, we've got a five-year roadmap in place and where there's a lot to come still. Yeah. <laughs> and some of those it's populations are, are, are the future in that roadmap. You know, obviously this is continuously evolving over time, but I will say, you know, even just thinking about your, your marketing approach and every audience group's a little bit different. We've had to think differently about if you've got, you know, baggage claim that you're trying yeah. to, you're not going to sit down and have an hour team discussion about your strengths in that no. kind of an environment. We've right. got to think about how to package things in ways that it's like, you've got your five minute quick connect as a team when you come in. Yeah. How do you connect that to creating a safe environment for people? Um, so I think, you know, we are thinking about how that looks a little different with each of those different audience groups. Absolutely. And that would be amazing down the road that you've got a, a crew on a plane and they all come in to meet each other for the first time and they can connect so quickly. Oh, you've got ideation. So do I. And maybe we could create something to do with the customers today. You know, I, I that's that's my futuristic in my idea. I love it. So. <laughs> uh, Dana Dan's asked twice now, so I feel okay. obligated to get it out there. Can can you ask about how you guys you you mentioned this, but what you've you mentioned the team grid a couple times. Yeah. How, how actually, I mean, just from a nuts and bolts standpoint, you just put a grid together, printing it out, and how are you using those? So, yeah. So, basically, we haven't done it with a, a ground ops, which is you asked, I think, about when we open a station. But with the leaders of that station might have done it. We have we had, um, I think, some folks go and do some California um, strong leadership teams um, at one point. But what we do is I have the team grid. And most of the time, if I'm develop, if we, we have a cross-functional team that don't work together on a normal day, then we'll pull. We have the Gallup platform so we can pull everybody's strengths, put it in a grid and quickly see what's going, what's the DNA of this team right now and what do we need to focus on and where are some areas we might have some blind spots and what are some areas of strength we want to focus on. And we kind of, it quickly kind of gets that team going. Yeah, I think for those who attended the summit, we had Danny Lee talk about strengths grids. Is that right, Jillian? Is, do yeah, I, I have he that did. right? Yeah. And kind of digging digging into those. Yeah, it was a big hit from what I've heard. Do you, you know, we also know in building a strengths based culture, getting, you know, a, one of those steps is getting uh, senior leadership, especially the CEO Absolutely. level. And so there was a question. Let me bring it up. How frequently does your CEO, other leaders, endorse strengths to your teams? Uh, yeah. Staff, it, video, those kinds of things. It's kind of funny. Um, it's, they have, because over the last, since 2018, they've been working on their strengths and having strengths activities with at least once or twice a year. But I will see our senior leaders. We have um, what's called rallies where our senior leaders will come in and talk to all the employees. I'll see them say, well, remember, I've got this talent or I've got that. So that it's offhandedly, they're talking about it all the time, but there's not like a focus of you've got to, you know, there's the, the genuine times that they do their strengths. And then there's the times you just hear them grassroots talk about it, which I love. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing is walking down the hall and hearing people talk about their strengths. I mean, that's mm -hmm. when I know we, that's another way we knew we had made it. And then Brian Brim came in and talked to our leadership last fall when we rolled out our updated core values and he applied the strengths to that and everybody got to talk about the strengths along with the core values. So again, it was the layered effect. Yeah. And I'll add, I think, you know, every single executive has had one-on-one -on -one strengths coaching. Right. I think one of the other things that um, ended up being powerful is that you actually, so if you think about kind of your top 60 leaders, you know, they're, they're getting this to some degree and some ongoing touch points, like what you've described, right. they're one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? But all of those leaders and Angie Sanders, who leads your, you know, SWAYU leadership work, did a lot of work around this. She met one-on-one yep. -on -one with every single she did. and um, essentially gave them an opt-in option for their department to join the strengths-based journey and laid out what that curriculum would look like and everything that came with that. And I think there's something powerful in giving a leader an opportunity to opt in right? Yes. Where they have to kind of put some skin in the game and say, all right, well, I feel like this is important to invest in. So almost that department by department approach, which might have been driv driven a bit by how your you know budgets are set up, ended up actually being something powerful in terms of creating some, some buy-in from those leaders as well. Absolutely. And one of the fun things that happened um, was Angie uh, put together a, a chart of all the leaders that had signed up. And so some of the other... It, and, and they said, here's who signed up so far. Then the other ones had that fear of missing out. Oh, my gosh, I need to sign up. I haven't signed up yet. You know, so that kind of happened a little. That kind of helped, too. Positive um, social pressure. That's right. <laughs> little, little FOMO. Yeah. Uh, good, good. I was going to ask that question. Do you find as you're rolling this out, do you have departments who hear about this or who go, 
hey, what about us? Has that happened? Well, most of them heard, all the senior leaders heard about it, and then it would trickle down. And some of those influencers I talked about that were in the team of teams or other areas would talk about it. Um, and most of the time it was because they weren't ready yet. They were making some org changes or things were going on. And we we're like, don't worry when, you know, Angie and team are there for them when they're ready. Um, and so I think a lot of that was was going on for those that couldn't jump right in. There and were a little bit bigger departments. Angie joined us on the after party uh, for, oh, yeah. for the summit. She did. And she did. So yeah. We got a chance yeah. to have that's her. Great. So it was great, great hearing about that as well. That's recorded if you attended the summit and you yep. haven't watched the after party yet. Angie uh, joins that's us great. on. One more as we <clears throat> bring this in for a landing, so to speak. Yes. W one more question uh, from Dan, and I think it's a good one. How much time do your 60 staff coaches spend coaching? If you think about what they have to do and the work that's done, how does that work inside the organization? Yeah, because most, you have to remember that in most departments, I think revenue management was had a, some dedicated coaches. Our coaches, like in marketing, they have day jobs. So this is part of just part of their growth and their development as, you know, as somebody that's interested in work health and in developing people. And so a majority of them do not, this is not their full, this is not what they do all day long, but they are the band leader for it within their department and making sure that the leaders are coached. So like we divided up our leaders in marketing and we each took a certain group of leaders and just worked with them. And I just hear from those leaders, um, whenever they need something or as we're coaching or as we're doing some change or as we're going through COVID. Um, and so everybody has kind of, um, a point person, our communications team did a great job. They divided up their team that way and have one-on-ones with their senior leaders um, quarterly and make sure they're coaching, but they all have day jobs too. Mm -hmm. um, so there isn't that many within the group that do this full time. Um, they pretty much do it as part of just because that that's a development opportunity for them. Yeah, and I'll add in just some from a structural perspective, I, you know, as folks are kind of listening in and thinking about what that structure looks like for your coaches. So if we go back to like when a leader opts in with their department, right, that's when they're identifying kind of that dedicated coach within their department coach or right. coaches. And we've built in in that roadmap. So all those kind of learning touch points for leaders and managers that coach has some pretty specific asks of, you know, coaching every individual leader and manager that's a part of that department. Um, once they've learned about their own strengths, coaching them, them around their team right. grid as part two, you know, so there's some pretty specific, I think, kind of asks with that group. Absolutely. And, you know, if you think about having probably about 30% of your time for somebody who you're asking to be able to do that is probably a fair um, ask uh, for somebody who's got another day job. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so to answer the question, I would say probably 25 to 30% of their time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's about average. Well, it's good. It's a good number. And I think we see that in a lot of organizations, right, Jillian? I mean, I think good. that is, yeah. uh, that's pretty typical. I'll be honest, uh, what I did for Gallup in this format up until just COVID was, you know, 35, 40% of my time. Yeah. And course things got so crazy we went full time on it dana i'm assuming strengths is needed more now during this time than it ever has before as people as things are going on if you were to kind of summarize the this time and maybe just a couple sentences of what have you guys learned and how, how are you going to move forward how would you summarize yeah. that summer in relation to strengths yeah yeah i mean how has strengths helped you guys get, so if you were just to kind of summarize how yeah. having that has helped you get through this and then looking right. ahead, yes, just a quick summary as we wrap yeah. up. Yeah, and I think, I think to summarize my top points is, you know, getting the tribe, making sure the leader's engaged, and then integrating. So as I look during COVID, I would say that integrating is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. So whether it's building a team grid for a quick team you've got to put together to get something done or if it's to figure out because you're in transition and you've got to move people around, let's understand who those people are and help them get into the right place that feeds their strengths. Or if you're coaching somebody in or out, you know, again, that that who is this person and how can I help them be the best self? And then third, I think it's um, while we're in this pause time and we can't do a lot of growth building 
for strengths internally, um, because everything's kind of in a pause time, how do we keep that going with what we have? And so developing these programs like strengths, how do we bring strengths at home? How do we help our employees? Because the one, one thing that stuck out with all of them as we've been talking to them through these last 90 days, or would you say 16 weeks, um, <laughs> is no matter what happens, the company care will care for you through that and and that gave them and they wrote back and said that really helped me to hear that and so the way we care for them is understand who they are help them understand who they are and then help them develop a plan for what that looks like through transition and that's what's on my mind right now yeah that's a good good way to wrap it jillian let's thanks yeah. let's thank dana for a time here Dana, yes. thank you so much. Thank yes. You know you. what? And I was, I was thinking back to just that infamous kind of March 11th day that we had together. <laughs> and I remember Angie standing up in front of the room and saying, I think this was at the beginning of everything, right? Yeah. And, and she said, this is an opportunity for strengths to be the hero. Yeah. And, and think about that for just a minute, because it's not strengths finder, the assessment that's the hero, right? It's the strengths in your people. And you talked about how right. you guys have invested in and you value your people, you're caring for your people right now. And I think that's the beautiful picture that we get to see through your story during this time is that's where it is a, a bit of a business strategy where you're thinking about if you really, really, what a more important time is there for you to lean into giving people the opportunity to think about how are they playing to their strengths to be resilient in this season? And, and that to me was, was really powerful to hear that this is the opportunity to step up with your strengths right. when you're facing, uh, you know, unprecedented uh, challenges around you. I'll, I'll leave you with a, a fun um, a fun thing I learned from Southwest, if you want to hear this. So I remember working with some of your your coaches that taught me, uh, Dana, you're going to have to check me on this. This okay. is chalks in, right? Which means that you're, this is what, what you do if you're going to signal a plane to oh, put, yeah. the, put the blocks in behind it yeah. and stop the plane when it comes to the ground. This is chalks out, which means the blocks go out from under the plane and you're ready to take off. Yep. And I think that's such a good analogy for when you're investing in a strengths-based culture, right? You're doing yeah. all the groundwork to be ready for chalks out that. so that when those tough moments come, you can still you're take ready. off. And that's kind of a fun way to think about that with Southwest. Yeah. I love that. And I always think, put the auction, auction mask on you first, right? There's a lot of analogy in that. The well-being that we want our people to have, we want them to know who they are so they can help take care of their employees, their families, their customers. And what better way than strengths, right? I mean, hello. Um, so that's, yeah, that's my analogy. <laughs> Wonderful. Dana, thank you for joining us today. Sure. <clears throat> Jillian, we got to schedule this for a year from now. Just get it on the books to See follow up. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I think about true. all the future story that is yet to be done. We're just seeing the yeah. tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. And uh, and so there's some incredible work yet to be done and some incredible stories yet to come. So, Dana, thanks for coming and well, sharing. Thank you. Thanks to Southwest for being such great partners with oh us and being gosh. willing to share uh, this time with us. Not everybody will do that. And so we just appreciate Aww. you doing that uh, for us. So, ladies, if you would hang tight for me one sec, let me wrap it by sure. saying uh, make sure you guys take advantage of all the resources we have available now through Gallup Access. You can get access to access. I hate to say it that way, but that's the way it works. Gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths is the easiest way to sign in upper right-hand corner. Just sign in. Tons of resources available for you on that site as well. And so we'd love to have you do that. Bottom of the page, by the way, out there, you can sign up for the Clifton Strengths Community Newsletter. Just stay up to date on everything we do every single month. A great way to stay in touch with those things. If you want to stay in touch with us and follow these live webcasts, just head out to gallop.eventbrite.com. Follow us there. A great opportunity to get a, kind of a early announcements of the things that are coming up. Yeah. A great way to kind of know. Oh, and I should say, make sure today, if you're listening live, get over to that fair sale that's going on. Yes. Stuff. That's, right <laughs> now, right? that's right. I need to, I'm, that's as soon as I hang up, I'm headed yeah. over to see where, where I want to go. If you have questions for us, not about fair sales, but any other <laughs> questions, you can send us coaching at gallop.com. Don't forget, join us in our Facebook groups, facebook.com slash group slash called to coach. That will get you in our big group. And if you're not a Facebooker and that's okay, you can join us on LinkedIn. Clifton Strengths Trained Coaches is what you'd search for. Just ask to be invited in and I will let you in as well. I want to thank you for joining us today. It was an hour that flew by. And so we oh, thank you for joining good. us. Huge thanks, Dana. You're well, incredible. Thank you guys for all you do and for being there for all of us during this time. It's been you, great. You are very welcome. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. Okay.